Hey, how you doing guys? Uh, it's Sunday, time for another video of the week, uh, or several videos we're going to try to make. This one's probably going to take a while because we're going to take a second look at a uh, piece of software, OBS Studio. Now, when it first came out, it was um, for the Mac platform. I mean, it's already been out on Windows for a while. When it was new to the Mac platform, it, to me it, was, it wasn't mature enough, I think. Uh, now they're in version uh, 1902, and I believe it's more than well worth it to look, uh, take a second look at it. Much has changed, uh, much will change uh, in, in the future. And I'm actually kind of going to compare it to another piece of software, Wirecast, a little bit. Now, uh, with OBS Studio, you get a lot of things. Uh, uh, I was going to say for the money, but it's free to download and use. It's open software, which it uh, it streams to uh, many uh, websites, uh, broadcasts, uh, records, and screencasts are, are some of the amazing things it can do. Um, also now it allows you to use plugins, um, which adds uh, uh, more basic features or even uh, advanced features. Um, and like I said, we're kind of going to repair it to Wirecast. And the reason we're uh, comparing it to Wirecast is because that's what I've used day in and day out for, um, I guess, the last uh, four or five years. And I do have a paid version. And um, I can't really justify that cost anymore because I used to do a live weekly uh, broadcast Everything was fo uh, uh, focusing on live broadcast. I pretty much flip flop now. Um, I'm primarily worried about recorded video on YouTube. Uh, maybe with occasional live stream, maybe once a month. I'm uh, work working up towards that. It's primarily to toward weekly videos pre-recorded. So, um, five hundred dollars for a Wirecast is a bit expensive just to uh, record to disk, which is I currently use it for. I mean, it's great for that, and it still is. You can, re uh, you can record uh, in many different formats, bit rates, and so on. So that's my fastest work uh, workflow through the Canon C100 directly to my computer and recording it using Wirecast. Now, also, the upgrade versions Cost more as well. It used to be ninety nine dollars. Um, now I think they're charging one hundred and fifty or one hundred and seventy five. I can't remember. And then that's not even talking about the pro version. I mean, uh, for certain uses, it's really hard to beat uh, for all the features you get. But like I said, it does have high cost. Um, OBS Studio is catching up with that very quickly, and. It's almost advanced enough on, I use a Mac platform that it's almost ready for me to almost replace it, uh, uh, replace Wirecast. And then uh, obviously I'm gonna save a lot of money and other things, not quite there yet. I'm waiting on one thing, which I'm actually gonna show you very shortly. So uh, let's look at it now. Hey, how you guys doing? I just had to take a quick uh, drink of coffee before the start of the video. Like I said before, we're going to take a second look at OBS Studio version 1902. Much has changed for the Mac architecture, so we're going to cover some of that. Um, so we're actually using a Canon C100 through a Blackmagic capture card and directly to the screen, but I am using different screen capture software and a different mic because that seems to be interfering with OBS Studio as I figured out it may, uh, may do it. Uh, mess, you know, I can't use both si simultaneously. So I'm actually using ScreenFlow to record this video. So uh, just to show you some of the uh, uh, newer features and how it works better with a Mac now. And um, like I said before, um, I love this section down here with all these buttons. Makes it a lot easier. Something I wish even Wirecast uh, kind of had as well. Uh, here you can do uh, start streaming, start recording, or record to disk studio mode, which you can show, uh, set up your previous media, and then transition in different ways uh, into that media. I don't normally use studio mode very much. 
and we're primarily going to take a look in particular closely is the settings uh, which we're going to go to right here and uh, this is new which is actually called the dark mode which I love it seems to integrate better with um, the dark mode on my Mac um, of course it's more preference and um, Streaming we kind of covered from our first time you can go to different streaming services um, Some are presets um, Which you got one two three four five six presets And then if you don't have one you can also just put it in your custom streaming server along with your key and uh, Do it that way uh, We're gonna spend most of our time in the output section uh, and this includes recording out to your uh, web uh, server or streaming server or record the disk uh, to those as well and you have two simple and then advanced and um, here since it's on a Mac we only have one selection software which is x264 which is actually the best codec to use for encoding into h264 um, the best one out there right now um, so here you got the streaming up here and recording it just gives you basic uh, functionality now to get the more advanced then obviously you have to select advanced and from here it breaks it down into streaming recording and audio now here it gives you in the advanced features it gives you more options what kind of encoder you want um, since I'm on a Mac um, still a lot of features are not enabled that Windows has and to give you an example you can actually use your GPU for uh, rendering some of this video uh, for example maybe uh, I don't know if it's recorded disk and or streaming out um, primarily maybe uh, recording the disk uh, just to give an example um, on some video cards you can uh, give you an example the AMD you have an AMD plug-in now this only works on Windows uh, uh, it's called the advanced media framework encoder plug-in um, plus you also have to be uh, use uh, I believe it's virtual studio uh, is another uh, virtual studio 2015 redistributables installed as well as long as the latest AMD driver now I'm guessing this also works with uh, Nvidia's CUDA as well I'm not a hundred percent sure but I did know uh, about this plugin um, so um, I, I do have some things that are not enabled for the Mac platform and hopefully sooner or later they're going to add them uh, eventually as well. Um, recording also gave you some uh, different options as well. Um, here uh, you can go to the uh, MOV formats, MP4 for instance, the t usually the two most used ones. Now this kind of kind of gives me a message saying that if I use MP4 uh, in case of a crash uh, some may not be recoverable um, that's all it's saying uh, in that case and then you can also choose what kind of encoder like I said with the AMD one you may be able to use uh, VCE or uh, CUDA maybe perhaps with the um, NVIDIA graphic cards for hardware encoding um, this uh, that I don't have a choice on the Mac yet I also know there is uh, FFmpeg version which is right here that even gives you more codecs you can encode into uh, for instance um, container format uh, which contains the video file you actually got so many choices in here um, to choose what to encode to uh, just like that and then uh, you can also do some changes to audio and audio tracks here too. Um, we're going to go home, go ahead and go back to standard. Um, uh, you also have audio. I think it also it seems to work really great with my Blackmagic audio as well because I actually use the external capture card uh, directly into a mixer. It picks that up as well as well as the computer audio in fact we're actually going to go into the audio section because my particular setup is different because 
since I have such a, uh, a much longer video cable going to my capture card and my audio gets recorded faster. So there's actually a slight delay. Um, now for instance on Wirecast they finally added the option uh, for audio video delay but now, uh, but then back then you had to pay for it. But now with their basic version, I think they do include it. But I would actually have to pay the upgrade price, which I'm not really wanting to do. But in OBS Studio, it's really nice. You can press on the mixer, and then here you have sync offset. And uh, here you can see I have it enabled by minus six milliseconds that actually match up the video with the audio. In my case. Um, you don't need it for every case. It all depends. Um, so that's what I like about OBS Studio. They do have that um, audio delay enabled. Um, another thing that I had problems with uh, was interlacing. Now this is what it looks like when I'm disabled. You can see that interlacing with that. Unfortunately coming directly from my camera. We're going to get some interlacing. But um, it does have, I uh, found out, it does have some basic interlacing. Well, actually, quite comprehensive because you have all these choices. Simply by enabling that, now it's much more smoother. You don't see those lines, uh, which is great. Um, just by right clicking on the uh, Blackmagic um, source. And then from here, I also got many different choices. Here uh, it gives you some basic preferences which I normally leave alone uh, or else, else it won't work. Um, it also has filters, some of which are very cool. Some basic, uh, and their choice of filters is very, is very basic, but the ones that they do have seem to be quite useful. And um, in this case, um, for the video, I do have sharpen because when it comes out on my camera, um, I don't have sharpening enabled in camera. I usually do it post. Um, so we can actually add some more filters. Now apply lookup table or LUT, which is very interesting because you can actually use your own LUTs and uh, give an example. Um, you can create them yourself or from other, um, uh, I'm trying to think, commercial, the ones you pay for. You can actually input them within OBS Studio. Very nice. I don't know if even Wirecast has this feature as well. Uh, you can do basic uh, chroma key, color correction, um, and then sharpen, which I use. And let's look some of the audio filters and plugins. Like I said, I love, even though I don't have very many of them, they do have the ones that I believe are the most useful. In this case, compressor, but since I use a, um, normally I use a hardware or a, a rack compressor, which is actually right behind me. It's not enabled in this case because I'm going directly to the computer. Uh, you have gain and noise gate. Same thing with uh, noise gate I use, which is built into my hardware compressor. But if you're doing it directly through your computer, then another uh, great feature to have, it cuts out noise anytime you're not talking. And then when you're talking, it, it, it turns off the gate and it's simply saying that your voice is gonna be louder than the background noise, hopefully. Um, so there is very many useful plugins, even though they don't have very many at this point. But the ones they do have are very useful, I have to say that, uh, at least. Uh, we're going to go back to settings real quick. I think we're going to cover a couple more. Um, video. Now this is the part that I don't like about OBS Studio, and I'm not sure. Uh, this actually may cause a recording to disk uh, problem I'm also having is right here the base resolution is um, 1080p and um, now all my output is scaled down in resolution down to 720p and I can't do uh, perhaps it's a setting I don't know about but there's no way I can actually set it down to or back up to 1080p well actually there is a way but in doing so I'm actually up resing, which is what I want to. I don't want to do because that's going to affect quality. But there's actually a setting somewhere in here where you can. Um, there we go. Rescale output back up to uh, 1080p. Makes no sense why the output is 
scaled down to 720p and I have to enable it to scale back up, I'm going to have a, a huge loss in quality doing it twice in a row. Um, another big problem I'm having is the record to disk feature. Um, when I begin my recording, it actually it's a blank screen for about two or three seconds. Not great if I want. Uh, I, I don't. I'm planning doing post uh, video editing because normally. I make my video using Wirecast, I'm done, I upload it, I, I call it a day and I'm finished. But if something like this happened, I would actually have to put it in an editing video editor, cut that portion out that's missing and then go from there. Now that might be because uh, could be a setting just like the uh, cropping problem or um, since it has to down res to 720p maybe that's where the lag is first it has to downscale and that's why there's that lag at the very beginning of the video for the downscaling to catch up perhaps I don't know um, so that's my overall uh, uh, impressions of OBS studio version 1902 it's almost there with the exception of the uh, downscaling and cutting off or uh, the blank video uh, and record to disk feature. If once they get those problems done, I may eventually even go to OBS Studio for everyday use and perhaps even streaming. But um, like I said, if you're on the Windows platform, you can have much more features, much more fully developed simply because it's been on the Windows platform longer. Give me your thoughts. Sorry if this video is so long, but like I said, there has been a lot of changes. And I discovered a lot new, uh, newer things. So um, appreciate it and see you later.